Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead and Friday Morning Ramblings, which today's actually Sunday, so maybe I should change the title. Today, I want to really talk about your fall crops. It was 54 degrees last night. Uh, it's about the 6th of September. It's really time to transition in. I've got beans, I've got tomatoes, I have peppers. I'll just show you some of those. They're still growing, but with this great temperature fluctuation, they're going to start dying off and not really producing. Um, I also want to talk about organic seeds, and if you want to buy organic seeds, that's great. Just know why you're paying more money. And to be honest with you, seeds, even though they aren't stamped organic, probably were organic. And I'll talk about that. It kind of makes sense too. So here are some of my cool weather radishes that I put these in about five weeks ago. And it was the heat of the summer. And I'm just taking them all out now. Most of them are good size. This is the first wave of my fall crops. Now growing from the summer when it's hot into the cool weather, they're gonna germinate and grow a lot more quickly. They're also gonna be a little bit spicier. When your radishes are growing when it's warm, they're gonna be uh, more spicy. They'll have that, that kind of burn after you eat them. So, don't be surprised if the radishes that you normally love from spring into the summer are a little more spicy than normal. So another wave of radishes will go in, but these are planted four weeks ago, and this is what I was talking about. Get your cool weather crops in towards the end of the summer, and they're going to be producing for you. Here are the pea plants that I planted the same day, about four weeks ago. And look at those. First week of September. These are going to be fabulous because they're grown. They didn't mind the heat. The heat helped them get to nearly, what is that, six feet tall. The cool weather's in. They're all going to start blooming and producing. So that was wave one. This is also a wave of radishes that were beat up. Um, because uh, snails and slugs came and took them down. But I have in, well, carrots over there. This is the pak choy I planted about two weeks ago. More lettuce. And let's just take a walk over here. The point that I want to kind of stress for this video is to really plant in waves. Your warm weather crops, your cool weather crops. Keep them going every two weeks or so, every four weeks. That's the second wave of radishes that are in. They're going to be a lot um, less spicy, to keep using that word over and over again, because it's getting cool now, and they're going to develop, and they're going to taste great. These beans are doing really well. Harvest them heavily, and they'll keep coming back. Okra looks pretty good. So this is two squash plants. This was the third wave of squash, warm weather plants. And I basically have gotten rid of all my other squash because they were getting beat up. And look how beautiful these are. I know there's a yellow scalloped right in there. There's two of them. There are some beautiful round zucchini growing right there. So those at my seed shop. There's one that's a little bit overgrown. That will be cut out and stuffed with rice or meats been harvesting green beans off of there. That is my second or third wave of green beans. And then in here is a standard green zucchini. So you can see by planting in waves, I have squash that look as good as they did back in June. So that's going pretty well. Now when we come over to the tomatoes, they're still producing, they're beat up. I'm going to actually be beat pulling most of these out because with the temperatures dropping, yeah, I will have some green tomatoes, but they're not going to really be forming new flowers and new plants. So I want to get this space all filled in with my cool weather crops. I'm going to put in a lot of turnips, other root crops, and really start saving those or growing those so that I can save them for really I guess as much as the winter as I can, maybe through January. I have plenty of 
tomatoes sauced and frozen, so I'm not going to run out of that. Now you can see all the different varieties of plants I'm growing. And if you're just getting started, you might go into a store and you see seed packets. And the seed packets will say non-GMO. And then you'll see a seed pack that says organic. And then you start seeing price differences. And then you start wondering, well, what do I need to buy? You know, I'm just getting started. I, I want to have a garden. I have a limited budget. Why is this pack of oregano, which are the smallest, tiniest seeds, $2.59, and this pack of oregano is $1.39. Green beans. Also some bush beans in there. That was the third wave of bush beans. And you're going to be thinking to yourself, well, which ones do I buy? Better buy organic, because if I don't buy organic, then I'm poisoning myself. And that's a lie. It's just a downright lie. Somewhere along the line, somebody got the idea to put organic on their seed pack. And it's a fine idea. Then other people had to follow, because people just started buying the seeds that said organic, because they thought organic is better than this other seed pack. Well, here's the truth. There are a lot of people that make seeds. Many seeds come from the same group of people, not 100%, but most of the people growing seeds have been growing organic anyway. It was just not really until you had to pay X amount of dollars, follow a protocol, get deemed organic, that that organic stamp made a difference. And what do I mean by that? Just because you buy a pack of seeds that doesn't say organic, doesn't mean they're not organically grown. And what does organic really give you? Now, this is where people unsubscribe and they yell at me. For seeds, organic gardening is great. You should be as organic as you can. Try and get to compost, grow in compost, be an organic gardener. But you have to realize that just because you're not 100% organic, or you're not using something stamped organic, it doesn't mean you're poisoning your plants, you're poisoning yourself, or you're doing something wrong. It's really, really important. So, generally speaking, and you can look it up, for a produce, something produced in the garden, to be deemed organic, the soil has to be three years of only organic fertilizer, something that's deemed organic. For sprays and stuff that you put on there, you have to keep logs of them. You can only use sprays that are deemed organic. And you can kind of see where the madness starts. So in order to be organic, you can only use products that are deemed organic, and you have to do it for a certain amount of time, and then your land gets to be, you know, stamped organic, which is cool. But again, before this organic stamp came, most smaller gardeners smaller farms were doing it organically anyway. Then they had to go and pay money to get the stamp done anyway. So we go through all this and you have a pack of tomato seeds here and a pack of tomato seeds here. One says organic, one doesn't say organic. If you want to pay 50 cents or a dollar more, that's fine. And usually what happens is the price is a little bit higher, but the seed weight is less, so you get less. The pack that's not marked organic can still be organic. And the pack that is marked organic isn't any better than the seeds next to it. And why is that? The only time you're going to really buy a chemical on your seeds is when the, chem when the seeds look pink or they look green. And that's a fungicide or a fungicide sprayed on them. And they're marked. They're called treated seeds. Don't buy those. You don't need to. Otherwise, what could possibly be in a tiny tomato seed from a farm that maybe used an organic, uh, a chemical fertilizer for a day that's inside that seed that's going to grow, that's going to harm you? Nothing. It's not possible. It's scientifically impossible. You can't have something inside of a seed that is so toxic to us that when it grows, it poisons us. Poisons us. It's just... It's just not going to happen. So be aware that when you're buying that stamp of organic on a seed pack, that's fine. Just know why you're paying more. The other thing that's on there 
This is my mushroom compost station. Looking pretty good. I did wine cat mushrooms. If you want to check out that video, these should be ready next year. Let me show you what they'll look like too. That's the wine cap. The other thing that is just bad advertising, and it should be illegal, is that when the seed pack itself says non-GMO, all seed packets, every single one is non-GMO. That stands for genetically modified organism, and that should be changed to a GEO, gen genetically engineered organism. When you take pollen from one plant, cross it with another plant, you're modifying it. If you're trying to breed puppies, you're modifying it, the, the genetic, genetic organism. When wind blows and cross-pollinates, that's a modification. Those things are all safe. The GMO that we're talking about is when DNA from one plant that can't normally pollinate another plant is kind of shot into the DNA material of that plant. And you get a creation that can't be made otherwise unless it was engineered. So it should be GEO. So just keep that in mind. But a GMO will never be in a seed pack. So if you're paying more for that, you're just paying more because it's labeled non-GMO. GMOs are big business. You have to buy thousands of dollars worth of the seeds and you have to really be practicing mass scale farming. You're never going to find them in a seed pack. So when you pay an extra buck for a seed pack stamped organic, non-GMO doesn't mean you're getting anything better. All seed packets are non-GMO. Most seeds are organic anyway. And what you're really getting when you're buying like from the big companies is they're just using their farms or their sources and you know some of them are slotted as organic, some of them are slotted as regular seeds. Um, don't believe, and I know with the rambling this is what this video is about, don't believe that an organic seed is better than a pack of seeds that doesn't say organic. Confusing. I don't know why we do this to ourselves. Um, but if you're a new gardener, just buy seeds. Buy what fits your budget. Get things planted and, you know, get your garden started. The most important thing when it comes to organic gardening is to know what you're putting in your garden, but to really use sprays or things to combat pests and disease that aren't toxic to you. You know, there are so many great organic sprays, fungicides, controls for uh, pests that you don't need to spray any harsh human-made chemical spray onto your plants. And that's what I really look at is what am I have the chance of mostly eating? And that would be fungicides or insecticides. So use something that is safe. Also, don't use them, organic or not, because you don't want to be eating copper spray. Copper is deemed organic um, on your crops. So harvest before you spray. Know what you're spraying, and it's going to be a lot safer for you. But most importantly, it is now the beginning of September. If you haven't gotten your cool weather crops in, get them started. You really enjoy having all kinds of leafy greens, the bugs go away, the diseases go away when these cool temperatures come, and you'll have a great garden. Thanks for watching, and please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com.